Welcome to Universal Talk. Today, we'll be discussing these current times and the importance of community living. Let's present the case. First, we must consider the possibility of a global collapse of money, the fall of communications, and the lack of resources to even stay alive. What if technology and communication did fail? What if the world experiences an economic collapse? Who would be in a, the best position to withstand and live through such an event? Those who have been wealthy and relied on technology and inheritance to keep them, or those who have lived in poverty and lived off the land in smaller communities, hunting, fishing, farming, and cutting firewood for every day to stay warm. In a moment, we'll have James Gilliland from the East City Ranch on the show to discuss this very thing. James is an internationally known speaker, author, and contactee. He is the founder of the Self Mastery Earth Institute, Science, Spirit, and World Transformation Conferences, as well as the owner of the ESA Ranch, an internationally known UFO and paranormal hotspot. He is also the author of Reunion with Source, Becoming Gods, and his latest bestseller, The Ultimate Soul Journey. James Gilliland, welcome to Universal Talk. Oh, thanks for having me on the show. Okay, James, so how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Great. You know, uh, I just wanted to tell the listeners a little bit about the ranch here because, uh, as you know, of course, uh, I just spent a few days there. Uh, Terry Ippoletti and myself flew in there, and we met at the uh, Portland, Oregon uh, airport and drove an hour and a half to your ranch. And uh, what a wonderful experience. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Oh, it was just wonderful. And, you know, you know, for a personal note, um, the energies there were so high, and, uh, you know, it just totally changes your outlook on life. And uh, um, even the simplest things, like being away from your phone and TV and computer and all that, and to be in touch with nature. I mean, we were up every morning at 6 o'clock without an alarm, and we went about our business, and, you know, we stayed up till probably 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and we were refreshed just by a few hours of sleep. And uh, what we witnessed out in the field there as we looked up, and I'm sure you remember, um, <laughs> we saw, what, 30-plus UFOs the first <laughs> night we were there? Yeah, yeah. And then you, I guess you got to see a couple of the big power-ups, you know, when they came and, and powered up overhead. Exactly. So what James means by that is we're sitting there tracking this thing across the sky, and then he pulls out, what was it, like a laser light or something? Yeah, it's a laser. Yeah, and he flashed it at it. So all of a sudden this thing slows down and it just powers up, and it would be like a couple football fields that you saw of light coming from this little, you know, apparently it looks like a star going across the sky, at least that's from my vantage point. And then there had to be some type of intelligence there in order to do it at the exact time that he turned this uh, laser towards it. And we, that happened to two different crafts. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, there was two. Actually, there were three. I think you missed one of them, but oh. it was it wasn't as good as the the two really big ones. Yeah, I mean, so you know, not to mention um, the community living that uh, the listeners could actually expect to witness when you uh, stay at the East Eddy Ranch. I mean, you don't actually have to stay away from the ranch and then come in during the day and just check things out. You could actually. Like Terry and I, we stayed overnight there from Thursday to Monday. Um, you guys had a course there for us to, what was it called, uh, Jigong? Yeah, Yigong. Oh, Yigong. And uh, the instructors, high-class people, I mean, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. i got to thank you from, you know, from my heart. We really had a good experience, James. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, the, the instructors there kind of incorporate uh, – a lot of the uh, Sifu Master Ginny Lam uh, is, is their main teacher now that they're working with, and uh, they incorporated that with a lot of the self-mastery classes as well. Yeah. You know, one thing I didn't get to tell you or anybody else there, because it was our last night there, and I walked out there around 1.30 in the morning by myself, and uh, no one else was out there. Everybody was in bed, and we had to get up at 6 in the morning to, to – uh, to drive into Portland to fly home, but um, 
I'm out there looking around, didn't really see anything, but I wasn't disappointed because it was such an eventful trip from day one that I thought, okay, you know, I don't really need to see anything anyway. I, it's not that I even needed it to begin with. I knew these UFOs existed. So I'm walking back to uh, the room. I get about 20 feet from the room, and I heard this thing take off away from me that was, it had to have been huge, and it was bipedal because the way it was stomping away from me was, it was something like it, the way I could picture it was like something that was like a thousand pounds going boom, boom, boom. Because, you know, a horse has a gallop, a cow. You know, I grew up on a farm, and, you know, and even an elk. I mean, they're not that loud because their weight is evenly distributed between four legs, and you can hear the difference with four legs almost a trot compared to a bipedal. Now, I'm not saying I saw any because I didn't see it. I wish I did. But I'm telling you what, you were definitely – nested in the middle of um, Bigfootville, and I would bet that's what that was. I wouldn't be surprised because we've had a lot of activity in the area here. A lot of the hunters have seen uh, Bigfoot. And then there's the American uh, Academy of Research or something. I, I can try to think of the name of them. But they did an extensive study up here, and they interviewed all the different eyewitnesses and were very in-depth in their questioning. And it was just amazing how each one of the eyewitnesses, down to detail, gave them the same story of, of the attributes of, of these beings, uh, minus maybe hair color right? And, and size. Basically, some are bigger than others. But uh, as far as the other detailed descriptions, you know, they asked them, they said, they said, do you wear glasses? Are you on any medication? Do you drink? You know, they ask them all these questions, and they're, they're, you know, they're really honest. They said, you know, most of them, if they did, they said, yeah, I had a beer, you know, but that wasn't, you know, what uh, made me <laughs> see this object. Right. But uh, they're very uh, positive responses, but the mo- majority of them were very professional people who didn't, you know, had pretty good vision and they didn't uh, do drugs or, or they weren't drinking at the time. Mm-hmm. And you've had some personal experiences yourself, right? Well, I had the opportunity to run into a female, a uh, female Bigfoot about probably 50 feet away. Wow. And, and it was, it wasn't anybody in a monkey suit, I guarantee you. It was seven feet tall and wow. uh, had a presence about it that, that you know, you... I, you know, I felt as, as big as they are and uh, as menacing as they could be, they're not. They're, they're extremely sensitive. They're very, uh, they're, they're very shy. They really don't want to deal with humans at all. And, and I just was lucky that I, I happened to cross this one because she was distraught. Uh, yeah. When I, when I found out she'd been separated from her daughter and was very distraught about it. And, uh, uh, and that was the only reason I got that close. Uh, you know, I, I just wish I had the visual to match the foot. Uh, well, it wasn't footprints, but it was like the the sound that was going away from me. Because <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what, it scared the heck out of me when it started because I was startled. I was just in the, the zen from being there all weekend. And I was just like, do heading back to the, the room. And all of a sudden, boom, boom. Yeah. Well, they they definitely uh, are known for eating apples, and we have quite a few apple trees here, and so they yeah they'll come by late at night and and snag the apples, whatever. We always leave a few apples on the trees. Yeah. And you know for the wildlife and whatever, and they come by and snag a few apples now and then. You know, it's funny because that's exactly where it was at, right behind where you know where we stayed at. There's these apple yeah. trees right there, and I, the first thing I thought of was. It could have been an elk that I never even thought about, like a Bigfoot coming in to get the apples. But yeah, that's true. Yeah, you uh, they'll they'll come and they'll scream and and they'll let this scream out. This is more like a roar almost. And every cow, every dog in the valley starts going off and and, and you know mooing or barking or yeah. whatever. It's amazing it, and it, it puts chills through you when they do it. I'll bet. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, in addition to, you know, the UFOs and uh, the Bigfoots in your area, um, would you say that, uh, would you consider yourself a, a type of a healer as well? You uh, Yeah, I don't like to claim those things, you know, because it's really between the person and spirit what happens. But a facilitator then? Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of miracle healings that you would 
that are very well documented that have happened here in the past. And, and I focus mainly on empowering people to make their own personal connection with spirit and, and removing the blocks, the mental and emotional patterns and things that block them from their healing. And in doing that process, every once in a while, we have a spontaneous healing where, where a very serious life threatening illness just vanishes. Uh, wow. just disappears completely. That's awesome. Okay, so um, in your opinion, James, do you think um, those who uh, have lived off the land, such as the Amish, do you think they'd be in a better place to survive uh, what's to come than somebody who actually lives in the city and that's all the, you know, they know? I would say definitely, uh, you know, things, it's not going to be business as usual It's because there's several events all unfolding at once. And I know there's a lot of people that discredit, uh, you know, Nibiru or this planet coming through, but it, it is definitely coming through. And if you know people that are in the know, that uh, uh, that know the secrets that aren't being released to the mainstream, uh, they're very clear about it, but there is an event coming. And we're also moving into alignment with galactic plane, which is uh, a, a very large magnetic wave of energy, you might say, and the Earth is being bombarded right now with cosmic rays, mm -hmm. uh, just massive amounts of cosmic rays, which always create a huge uh, shift in evolution and, and species and everything else. And so some things make it through, some things don't. But uh, th there's so many different events. But, you know, any scientist worth their salt knows that we are moving to a new place in the universe that's highly charged. Uh, place and we are moving into alignment with galactic plane and it's a place where there is a lot of debris and, and a lot of meteors and things of that nature so you know we've definitely seen a lot of uh, meteor activity some pretty big meteors around the world that have been zooming through and exploding uh, seems to be like a monthly event almost lately yeah but uh, you know we're, we're definitely moving through some some big changes and, and the biggest one is, is when the energy gets to a certain level, a lot of the things that we depend upon that we like even to do this interview right now are going to go aside, you know, and be yeah. crashed. So the, you'll, you'll probably see the Internet go down first, and then the, the main power grid will go down. And, and when the grids go down, it's just not going to be a pretty picture, and, uh, especially if you're in the city. Right. right? Because, you're, you know, your water needs to be pumped, your sewage needs to be pumped out, your food needs to be trucked in uh, to get those trucks moving. The, the gas stations have to have electricity to pump and fill those trucks. And so there's uh, some major solar events coming up too as well. But again, there is a possibility that we might get some major divine intervention for all of this, but it, it is on the books. And uh, if we are a civilization worth saving, we probably will get a lot more intervention. Great. So, you know, uh, there, a parable comes to mind right now that I can't remember exactly, and, and I'm not quite sure if it is a parable exactly, but as we're talking here, this 